Hey there, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna show you how I made this privacy shade for our back porch. We wanted a little more privacy and a shade for some of the light that comes in here. And this was a good solution. I made it mostly out of some scraps and then some cedar fence pickets. The cedar fence pickets that I picked up had been sitting in a pile and must have been rained on or something because they were pretty wet. So I spread them out on the driveway in the sun and let them dry. Cedar comes pretty rough, so I'm going to hit all of this really quickly with a sander and just knock off some of this rough stuff. And check that out, it's rough. I am in the phase of the project where I'm just trying to figure some stuff out. These are gonna be the slats. They would be long like this. I thought I was gonna cut them at parallel 45 degree angles so that they would sit inside my frame then the next one would come and sit on top of that and it would build this louvered vent. However, if I do that, everything except the bottom and top one are gonna have this really sharp edge and I don't think I want that. I think it will break off more easily. I think if someone bumps it, it will hurt. Plus it's more difficult to rip everything at a 45 degree angle. So I think I'm going back to just cutting these straight and I will still mount them at a 45 degree angle, but it'll be easier to cut and I think everything will end up looking better. There was a lot of repetitive stuff in this build and one of them was ripping all of these fence pickets to the same width. For the frames that will be holding the fence pickets, I am using some scrap that I have just left over. I actually picked some of this out of a burn pile that was local in my neighborhood. It's treated lumber and this one was not really that straight. So I struck a straight line on it and cut that on my bandsaw so that I could reference it on the table saw and then just started breaking it down, cleaning up the edges and ripping them into the strips that I needed for the frames. I didn't have that much material to work with, so when I saw that one of them had a big split in it, I just pried it open, added some glue, clamped it so that I could definitely get some good use out of this board. And yes, this is waterproof glue. Now it was time to start assembling the frames. There's nothing fancy here. I just used some butt joints and some screws, and I just cut them to length at my table saw since I don't have a miter saw. All of these screws are quite close to the end of the board, so I made sure to pre-drill the holes before adding the screws. That way, they wouldn't split. And you've been seeing me use these Rockler quick action clamps. They sent me some of these a little while back, and I've been putting them through the paces. They're really handy to use single-handed, open and close quickly, so I definitely recommend them. Then it was just more of the same, putting all of these three frames together. Well, time for a bonehead move moment. Ready? Um, as I was doing my planning and trying to go about figuring out the materials I needed for this project, it's a little you know, unorthodox and I don't like wasting any more than necessary. Obviously, every project has waste, but I was making my calculations based on the fact that I thought these fence pickets were eight feet. I don't know why I thought that, but it was in my head this whole time that I could get two of my slats out of each board. They're not. They're six feet and I'm a dummy. So now I get to decide if I wanna keep going with the project and I think I've milled enough stuff now that I should, but it's gonna cost probably another 60 bucks because I have to go get some more fence pickets. Just part of the project. Because of that miscalculation, I figured the easiest thing to do was to take one of the three frames and cut it in half and basically make two smaller frames. That way I can use the smaller offcuts of the fence pickets in these small frames. So it was back to the milling machines. I had to get a little bit more material out of the scraps that I had for frames and I actually didn't even have enough. So I ended up having to pocket hole together one side of one of these small frames, but I was able to do it in a way that they would be totally hidden and you'll see that later. Or will you?
I enclose those two small frames very quickly just so I can move on to the next step. Most of the time I don't miss having a miter saw, but this is one of those instances that it would have been very helpful. I had a lot of these pieces to cut and being able to bundle them together and cut them probably 8 or 10 at a time would have saved a ton of time for me. Regardless, I was able to put together something that I could get very consistent cuts and let me show you what that was. Many times when I'm trying to get a consistent cut, I'll use one of my magnetic feather boards on the cast iron top and just bump that and make my cut each time. These slats were way too long for that. They were over 43 inches, so I removed the fence on the table saw, created a stop block at the end with some clamps on the additional wing, and I would just bump the piece each time, making sure that it was not in the contact with my bump stop and the blade at the same time. I am getting ready to cut all of the short slats now. I'm going to be using my fence and the miter gauge on the table saw. Now, if you just butted this up against the fence and pushed it, this piece could get bound in between the blade and the fence and it can be kind of dangerous. It could want to kick back at you. So what a better idea is, is to clamp some sort of board here. You can see I'm not uh, holding up any of the way that I'm clamping. Uh, and then you just want to butt it until it touches that board and then you're able to push this through But look by the time it contacts the saw there's a gap here So this piece will just be free floating and after you make the cut There's no pinching going on because you're not touching over here on this side I wanted to point it out because not everybody knows that and uh, anytime you can not pinch something between the blade and the fence It's a good idea Then I just did that like a billion more times to finish all of the small slats and I was basically done milling finally. I'm gonna try out a whitewash technique and all I mean by that is obviously my color is not literally white. I'm just going to water down this acrylic paint and let some of the wood grain of the cedar show through. To do that, I don't really quite know the ratio of mixture that I need yet. So I'm gonna try one to ones, basically I'm just uh, this is a this is a sample that you can get at Lowe's five dollars. It's seven and three quarter fluid ounces So and it's exterior paint So I'm hoping that this will be enough by the time I water it down to paint all of my pieces um, Depending on how thick I feel like it is I might wipe some of that paint off uh, I don't want it completely painted. I want a little bit of that wood grain to show through so hopefully this is enough. I'm just gonna start by putting this entire thing in there, add one whole can of water to it so it's a one-to-one. -one. I'm gonna mix it up, see what it looks like. Let's try it. Now I'm just going to go fill this up with water. That way we'll start with a one-to-one -one and I'll see if I think that's enough to cover everything. I'm actually gonna put the lid back on here now that I've added water and give it a good shake. Hopefully I can get some more of that paint out. Yep, it's definitely watered down. All right, let's see what this does. I'm gonna keep that in case we need to add more. Let me find a stir stick. It's all mixed. This is pretty thin already at a one-to-one. -one. I'm hoping it'll be enough paint being this thin because I really don't think I want to thin it anymore. Should have kept my container a little taller. I just cut this salsa container off so I could use it. And um, it's mixing pretty well. I'm gonna stir this for a few more minutes and decide if it's watery enough. I think it is. And then I'm gonna get going painting. Boy, was I wrong. There is no way that that little $5 sample was going to cover all of these slats and all of this wood. It ended up being really thirsty, so I had to go buy more. I ended up mixing another batch that you can see here on the right, and that is a 2 to 1 water to paint, whereas the one on the left is a 1 to 1. So we liked the 1 to 1 better and went with that. I started out painting all these slats by hand, but this is about where I realized this paint was not going to cut it and I was really tired of brushing it on. 
even though my wife came out and helped me brushing it on, just to do one side took us quite a while. So I went and got some more paint so that we could Oh yeah, we decided that spraying was definitely the way to go. We just had too many of these slats to paint them by hand, and the sprayer worked great. Just like when I was brushing it on, I made sure not to apply too much paint. We still wanted some of the wood grain to show through, so I'm just putting some light coats on here. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how exactly to put all of these slats in these things. Uh, I thought about making a jig so that I could lay it here and it would have a 45 degree angle, and that way I could just butt each slat up against that and nail it in. I'm just gonna brad nail it in from the sides. Um, I think it will be just as easy because I'm going to have to mark at least here on the on the front edge where the edge of each of the slats will need to start. Uh, I think it will be just as easy once I mark that to take a combo square, put it on the 45 degree, mark, uh, line it up with my mark and put one more mark at the back of where the slat will be and do that all the way down. And then all I'll have to do is line up this point with the first tick and the back side with the, the tick mark on the back and shoot the nails and do that from each side going all the way up. What I'm trying to figure out now is exactly the spacing because we don't want to be able to see between these, but we wanna have the maximum amount of airflow that can kind of get through there. This was definitely the most tedious part of the whole build laying out all of these lines and then one by one nailing in the slats, occasionally missing with the nail and having to remove a nail. I just kept going a little bit at a time, did both of the small frames and then moved on to the large frames. One of the large frames had some bowed sides and it was preventing me from putting the slats in there. So I turned around one end of my parallel clamp here and made it like a spreader just so that it could account for that bow, spread it apart just enough that I could get the slat in there and nail it and move on. I didn't have to do this for each of them because as I put them in there, it kind of corrected the bow, but it seemed to work really well. This was taking way longer than I wanted it to, so I enlisted some help from my wife to do the rest of the layout on the other frame while I finished the one frame. These slats are only 5 8 of an inch thick, so it's pretty much inevitable that you're going to have some of your brad nails that shoot outside and you're going to have to deal with them. The easiest way i found is get a pair of diagonal cutters, grab onto them, but don't grab so hard that it splits the actual brad nail. Then just move it back and forth, back and forth, applying a little bit of pressure and it will snap off underneath where you can't see it. Finally, all the tedious nailing is done. It's time to put these things up on the back porch. I brought them out and made sure to get them in the right order because if you remember, I need to hide the ones that had the pocket screw. So I had to make sure that those faced another one and we weren't going to see them. I spent a little time using a large level, making sure these things were plumb in both directions. I just had to tap them here and there to make sure that they could be in the right spot before securing them to the rail with some screws as well as up into the beam of the deck ceiling. Why don't you 
My well, wife helped me kind of hold everything as we put each panel up one at a time and I actually secured the next panel to the previous panel with just a screw or two to make sure they were nice and tight together. The banister for this deck made the perfect ledge for this and I was able to screw down into the 2x4 to make sure it was very secure. We've had this done for a couple weeks now and we have really been enjoying it. The breeze is still able to get through there, especially because below the banister it's still pretty much wide open. And while obviously it's not a total wall, it does provide a lot of privacy and some morning shade. So overall, I would say this was a success. Uh, I had some hiccups in the material and how I was figuring out how much I needed, but that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. If you had a different way that you go about maybe attaching this or getting the slats in there, definitely let me know. Leave me a comment below. Also, I'll have links to all of the stuff that I used down in the description and uh, a couple more videos that you might like. I'm gonna put them on the screen here. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.